So finally, we go to the CPP file. You want to include the shader, the age. Uh, include the shader. We're going to create a destructor. Constructor, I mean. Our destructor. And basically, you want to create some stuff in here that we can. We, got, we want to detach the shader. Once the program has ended, make sure you detach it. Detach the vertex shader. And you want to detach the other shader, the picture shader. You want to delete the shader. The vertex um, shader. And you want to do the same thing with the pixel shader. Delete shader. Uh, people, a lot of people call it pixel shaders or fragment shaders. They're almost the same. Almost, they're exactly the same actually. And then you want to delete the program. Okay, so for our first function. We're initialize the vertex and picture shader bool shader initialize conchar pointer to a bs file name and conchar pointer to the ps file name. And in here, usually I, when I create my shader files, like the vertex file and the pixel shader file, I always have it inside a folder. So if you guys can have it in a folder, then go ahead, which I should recommend. You want to keep your stuff clean. So basically, this is the, the root where we all see why I'll explain right now. So we create a sharp pointer BS. And set it to equal the shader. So I put shader dash because that's the folder that we can name it. And then we can uh, copy the BS file name into here. So it'll be the shader slash and whatever the name is. And I may need to use, let's, yeah, there we go. Pass in the BS and we can pass in the file name that we can attach to the shaders. And you want to do the same thing for the other one. And it could be shader. And we get SDR cat underscore S. Meow. Wait, what? what uh, oh, yeah, PS file now. Okay. And then you want to say. If not initialize, initialize shader. I'm um, I'm spot the shader. Hold on, it's capital H. I don't know why it's capital H on here. Hold on. There we go. And we may need to, uh, we can include our IO stream because you can print it out to the little window, the command prompt window, which is why I love it so much. I guess I'll be easier using namespace std. 
Z out. And we can call it like shader. BS. And PS. Couldn't. Couldn't be. Oh, come on. See, it sucks when you try not to look at the keyboard. And since it's a Boolean, you want to return false. And then return true if it actually everything worked fine. Then we're going to kind of call our, our initialized shader. Was it. I forgot the type it was, initial shader was the boolean too. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Okay, bool, shader, initialize shader, which pass in the con char pointer to the BS file name, the con char pointer to the PS file name, okay. We're gonna create a con char pointer for the vertex sh shader buffer. Con char pointer to the pixel shader buffer. And the status. So basically, you wanna load the vertex. Shader file into the buffer vertex shader buffer equals a load shader source file. And you pass in the BS file name as a parameter. And you just make sure if vertex shader buffer. Then makes you want to see out and say the shader vertex buffer. Couldn't be initialized. And the thing return false. Okay. Now you want to load. You want to load our the picture shader too. So the pixel shader buffer equals the load shader source file and you pass in the PS file name. And do the same thing. Actually, let's just copy this. Just make sure you pass pixel here. Return false. Now you're going to create create the, the vertex and pixel shader object. So M vertex shader equals the GL creates pro no it's not program a shader and put a GL vertex underscore shader and pixel shader equals a GL create shader and it could be a GL fragment shader I probably should have called it fragment shader instead of pixel, but it's not that hard, right? You want to copy the shader source file into the into the vertex and fragment object. 
So GL shader source. So basically what this is doing, we're gonna pass in our vertex shader. We have one value of that. And we're gonna give whatever we read from file, which is the vertex buffer, the vertex shader buffer that we create on top. And we can pass this information to the vertex shader. And you want to do the same thing for uh, for our pixel. Make sure you have the ampersand on them. You dereferencing them, so just make sure you do that. And then you want to release the buffers. So delete. Vertex shader buffer, vertex shader buffer equals zero. Delete the other one, the pixel shader buffer, the pixel shader buffer equals zero. And compile the shaders. This. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit so you guys can see better. GL compile shader and vertex shader and GL compile the picture shader as well. And you want to check to see if they compile successfully GL get shader IV M vertex shader GL compile status and we're gonna pass in the status that we created on top. And if status, status does not equal one, then basically you wanna put the output, not the output, why do you keep saying output? The shader error message. Input M vertex shader and a BS file name that we can need, and then return false. And you want to do the same thing for the other one, the picture shader. Got to get the status and make sure it's a picture shader and the the BS file name and then basically make sure you it does not equal one as well in case you didn't copy it now we want to create create the shader of program object and shader program equals create well, it's actually GL create program. And you want to attach the vertex and pixel to program. GL attach shader and shader program and vertex shader GL attach shader and shader program and do it to the pixel shader you want to link the program GL link 
program. And you want to check the status as well as we did with the other ones. Geo get program. Make sure it's get program this time. Get program IV. And, and shader program. Geo link status this time. And you want to pass in the status in there. And make sure the status does not equal one. Then you want to use the linker error message. And you want to pass in the shader program ID. And return false. Because that's what are we gonna do. Okay, and once you have that, we're basically done with this function. Now make sure you return true, not false. 